Hi, today I'll teach you how to create the soft 3D effect in Illustrator known as Neomorphism, sometimes also referred to as soft UI. It became a huge trend in 2020 and people overused it so much that it died just as quickly as it became a trend. But I believe its soft and modern look still has a place in UI design, as long as you know how and when to use it. Let's jump into Illustrator. The cool thing about this effect is that we'll use only one object, instead of stacking multiple shapes on top of each other. This allows us to easily edit the shape after applying the effects, as well as saving it as a graphic style to quickly apply it to any other object with a single click. And to do this, I'll show you just how powerful the appearance panel can be. Let's start by setting our background color. If you want to follow along, this is the color I'm using. This is something you have to pay attention to in Neomorphism. The background color needs to have space for highlights and shadows, so it can't be neither too bright nor too dark. After creating the background, we'll lock it so we don't select it by accident by using the shortcut Ctrl or Command 2. Then, we'll create a shape with the same exact color of the background. And this is very important, it has to be the same color. I'll create a rectangle and then round the corners. Sharp corners don't work too well for this style. With our shape created, let's go to the appearance panel, select the fill, go down to the effects button and choose drop shadow under the stylized category. The properties I'm using for all the effects are on the left side of the artboard, so you can just pause the video and copy them if you want. Notice that, since we selected the fill before applying the drop shadow, the effect was applied only to that fill and not to the entire object. Our next step is to duplicate this fill, and we can do this by selecting it and clicking on the plus icon on the bottom of the panel. Unfortunately, Illustrator doesn't allow us to rename these items to better know what they stand for. So let's just keep in mind that the bottom fill is the shadow and the top fill will be the highlight. Now, click on the drop shadow effect of the new fill layer and change the settings according to the specifications. Lastly, we'll duplicate the fill once again, but this time we'll select the drop shadow effect and delete it. Then we'll select this last fill and add two different effects. The first one is Fatter under the stylized category with a radius of 15 pixels and offset path, under the path category with an offset of 17 pixels. Make sure both effects are applied under the last fill we created, and that the offset path is on top of the feather, otherwise it won't work. Just so you can understand what's going on, we're adding one last layer to this object, expanding the fill outside the path using the offset path effect, then blurring the edges of the fill so we can have a smooth transition between the edge of the shape and the shadows and highlights. And now the first neomorphic effect is ready. This is the effect of a raised button. Next, we'll create the opposite, a press down button. But before, let's drag this shape to the graphic styles panel. Now we can just create whatever shape we want and just click on the graphic style to apply the whole effect. And that's exactly what we'll do for the next effect. But before, we will have to do some workarounds with the Pathfinder panel. Unfortunately, this second effect will require more than one object, since Illustrator doesn't have an inner shadow effect. Please Adobe, I've been waiting for this for 10 years now, just do it already. So first, we'll create our desired shape, and let's make it a different color for now, just so we can see it better. The original color will be applied later with the graphic style. Make a copy of this shape and set it aside. We'll use it in a bit. Then we need to create a bigger rectangle on top of it and move it below the first shape. Select both objects and go to the Pathfinder panel. There, hold the Alt key and click on the Exclude option. Holding ALT will turn this into a compound shape, and this just means that both shapes are still accessible and editable, even though the Pathfinder effect has been applied. This will make it easier for us to edit it later if we want. Observe how we can scale the object sideways and the rounded corners on the inside don't get distorted. Ok, after applying the Pathfinder, we can go ahead and apply the graphic style. Before we move on, and this is optional, I like to increase the intensity of the highlights when doing the lower defect, because I feel they get a little too subtle here. 
Finally, we did all this work around just so we could have the shadows and the highlights being projected on the inside of the button, to create the illusion of it being lower than the background. But we still need to get rid of this outside elevation. And to do that, we'll use the copy of the object we just made to create a clipping mask, which is basically just a way of cutting shapes without actually cutting them. We're just hiding, just masking them. To do this, select both objects and align them so they are perfectly centered on top of each other. Make sure the black rectangle is sitting on top. This is really important. The top object is always the one which is used as the actual mask. Then hit Ctrl or Command 7 to create the clipping mask. Alternatively, you can also right click anywhere in the artboard and choose Make Clipping Mask from the menu. Then our second effect is ready. Because we use the compound shape option in the Pathfinder, we can scale this however we want, it will always keep the round corners without any distortion. If we hadn't done that, this is what would happen. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new from it. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye!